so many mouths to feed, not enough food. Yeah, we planned for 60 people. There must be 80 close to 100 people out there milling around the buffet. 80 hungry people. Anyway, I called the serving spoon for reinforcements. Scott, Barney, would you like to come with me and pick everything up? Uh, do you want to go with us? Um, no. No, I'm on KP duty. We'll be back as soon as we can. All right, I'll call them the masses. Tell them that there's no more food on the way. Come right here to Blake. I think this is time for the loaves and, and fishes routine. Uh, would, you, would you settle for crackers and tuna? <laughs> well, I guess the least I can do, I hate to sacrifice it, but we're going to have to give them the rest of the potato salad. Um, I'll see back about the coffee. Listen, I want to thank you. We've had such a big turnout this year, and you've done a lot of hard work, really. We appreciate it. Thanks. Are you okay? How do you find a cyber lover? Um, a cyber lover? Well, uh, I guess uh, online chat rooms, uh, personal ads. Are you are you looking for a date? No, I'm looking for an answer, and I don't have a lot of time. Ryan, Ryan can help me. Will you excuse me? Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Sure. You know, I had something a bit more leisurely in mind for our dinner tonight. <laughs> uh, listen, let me make it up to you with a, a picnic oh. out by the old quarry on Route 25. Oh, well, only if you like fast food. What do you mean? Uh, well, actually, a couple of years ago, uh, the quarry was turned into a mini mall. How do you know about the quarry? Well, I, I used to live in Pine Valley, you know, before when I was younger. I got the impression that you were new in town. Do you, do you have family here? Maybe uh, maybe I know some people. Are, are you a born and bred local? <laughs> well, close. No, um, I moved in with my Aunt Phoebe when I was a teenager and never left. Oh. It's just odd that we never ran into each other, you know, when we were growing up here. You know what, if the quarry's no longer here, there's probably a lot of other changes. Uh, how would you like to volunteer to be my tour guide for the city? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Marion, do you need something? What I need, um, I'm afraid nobody can give me. Stuart. Yeah. yeah. That's right, you know, nothing makes sense. When he's not here, I mean, Scott's lost his father. He might lose the woman that he loves. Liza's miserable. Kobe hasn't seen her daddy in weeks. Mm -hmm. Arlene and Adam are married and running some dump out on the highway somewhere. I mean, nothing makes sense. Everything turns upside down. Adam bought that dump out on the highway? He and Arlene are running it. Are you kidding? And Haley's helping them. Haley is working in a bar with Arlene. You're right, Mary, and the world has gone mad. She's got it in her head that uh, if she's close to her father, she can save him. But what Haley doesn't understand or doesn't want to admit is that Adam can't be saved because Adam doesn't want to be saved. Hey there. Hey. Um, are you still interested in that tour of uh, Pine Valley? My Pine Valley? You got something in mind? Are you free? Well, I, everybody left here with a full belly and a smile. My work here is done. Well, then how would you like to accompany me uh, on a visit to my ex-husband's new business? You're on. Wow. This is the place your ex-husband works? Uh, this is the place that my ex-husband owns. Well, at the risk of sounding like an oaf, which ex is this? Adam Chandler, multi-billionaire. All evidence to the contrary. You have no idea why Adam bought this place? Oh, no, I have some idea. I mean, it's just... I, I just find it so unbelievable that he's really doing it. I mean, Adam is the snob of, of the first degree, and it's, it's so unlike him, so I have to think that there's uh, obviously something more going on. And there usually is. 
I appreciate your accompanying me here. I'm sure this is not a typical night out for a minister. Ah, uh, yes, Lemon Brook. I think that would be my line, wouldn't it? Ah. It's just unbelievable. So you said you think you know why he's doing this? I think he's trying to shut out the world and his family. He, I think, feels responsible. He's torn up about Stuart's death and feels responsible for Stuart dying in that fire. Is he responsible? I don't know. You know, he's not directly. But Stuart was the light in, in Adam's life, you know? And without Stuart, I think, I don't know if there's anything left of, of who Adam used to be. You seem to care for him a lot. Oh, I was married to him once, you know? I mean... I think it's really less concern and more, I don't know, morbid curiosity. No, no, I think it's more than that. I, I, I mean it. You're a generous soul. If that were true, I would not have held a grudge against Adam for all these years, really. I mean, it didn't do either one of us any good, especially me. And that's why I don't go there with anybody anymore, because, I mean, if you can't forgive someone their mistakes, what does that make you? It means a lot to, to hear you say that, brother. Hearing you say that holding a grudge is harmful, well, it gives me hope. You? About what? Well, you know, like I said, you're, you're, you're very generous and truly kind and full of forgiveness. Elliot, do you want to tell me something? Okay, let's skip the pleasantries. What can I get you to? Uh, I'll have a white wine, thanks. <clears throat> Salsa with lime, please. Oh. Well, um, no friend of Bill's is a friend of mine. <laughs> Come on, Rav, it's a joke. Excuse me? <laughs> You're in recovery. You're in a bar. It's okay. I mean, my daughter's here. If she can do it, you can do it. You know, Arlene, I think that's a lot like the pot calling the kettle black, don't you think? I work in this joint, and I haven't had a drink all day, which is more than I can say for you, Miss High and Mighty. Mm. All right, white wine and a Bill's chill. Come right up. Oh. I'm really sorry I dragged you here. Oh, it's okay, Mark. If you don't mind my asking. I'm not in recovery. I just choose not to drink anymore. I found that, well, no good comes out of it, so I just pass. I didn't mean to press. You didn't. I just felt like you wanted to tell me something before, right? What was it? This is not the kind of place to have a heart-to-heart -heart with anyone. <laughs> and do you mind if I settle up here? No, actually, I'd appreciate it. Good. <laughs> You are the only reason why I'm having any fun in this place. Arlene, can I pay up here? Uh, uh one second, Rip. Adam's place, Arlene here. Uh, it's Marilyn from the Queen of Hearts. How do you get this number? Um, I, I talked to some maid at your house and she gave me this one. Look, I gotta talk to you. What do you want? Stuart is remembering things that really don't match up. Are you really who you said you were? Look, is it money? Is that what you want? No, no. Look, I'm just trying to help Stuart. He's kind of helpless and sad, and he just wants to go home and find his family. Well, that can't happen, all right? Now, uh, you didn't... You didn't tell him what we discussed, did you? No, no. But listen, he said that your voice is reminding him of something. Like a car accident or something like that. Was he hit by a car? Was, is that what happened back there? Were you two in an accident? No. There was no car accident, and he was not run over, okay? And certainly not by me. Oh, I'm sorry. Take it easy. Well, he said he remembers being hit by a car. Look, if it did happen, it didn't happen here. Don't encourage him. Just tell him that, um... Oh, kid. 
He's not over there, okay? So don't go pushing something you don't know anything about. And don't call me again. I'll call you. Who do you know that was hit by a car, Lee? No one. And mind your own business. 